All right, anatomy and physiology students, here we go with a quick review of some epithelial and connective tissue microscope slides. This is actually simple squamous epithelium that you can see here lining a venule, a very small blood vessel. This is red blood, red blood cells inside the blood vessel. It veers off the screen here, which is why it looks like it ends right there. And the simple squamous epithelial cells are these cells here lining the blood vessel on either side. You can see the dark stained nucleus, one cell, another cell. Remember, these are squashed cells, flattened cells, but you're seeing them cut end on. So that's why they just like, like, like a very thin cell like that. So a really nice view of all these simple squamous epithelium cells. Some of them have that nice darkly stained nucleus that's right down the middle. All right. This is now um, another slide. This is an unusual preparation. It's a, it's a peel where they've just taken the tissue and laid it flat on the slides. And what it is, is it says mesothelium, but it's actually the serous lining, either of the pleural or peritoneal cavity. They've peeled off that thin saran wrap-like serous lining and just laid it on the slide. And if you remember, that serous lining is made up of simple squamous cells. So there you can see those nice flattened cells laying on the slide with their nuclei. Um, one of the you know most beautiful views you can get of a simple squamous epithelial tissue. This is a simple cuboidal epithelium in a gland. Oops, sorry about that. This is in the thyroid gland, and this is the tubule of the gland, and these are the cuboidal cells, not really exactly square-shaped, they're rounded cells around the tubule that would secrete the thyroid hormone or the products that the gland is secreting into these tubules. They all then, and then they get taken up into the blood as an endocrine hormone. So you can actually um, see here probably a blood vessel in that region. So there you go, those nice cuboidal cells surrounding the duct, the, the tubules in the thyroid gland. This is another tubule here, another tubule here with their simple cuboidal cells around them. This is a simple columnar epithelium. You can see here, this is actually a slice across the intestines, the small intestine. And this is the villi sticking out into the intestines, into the lumen or where the um, breakdown products of the food would be located. And these are the columnar cells on the surface of these villi. And when we look at them more up close, you can see how there are these nice columnar cells all lined up like that on the surface of the villi. And if you look even more up close, you can see that nice columnar nature, the nuclei of the cell, but the cells standing tall like that. These are goblet cells that secrete mucus to protect the cells from the digestive enzymes or whatever else might be in the um, <clears throat> interior of the small intestines. And these are little microvilli. Rare to see those very clearly on the surface of the cells. This is another view of those columnar cells in the small intestines. You don't see the villi so clearly, but you do see the nice goblet cells on the surface. This is now the wall of the trachea. We've cut across the trachea here. Air would be going in and out of the lungs in this region here through the interior of the trachea. It's mostly cartilage down here, uh, some fatty tissue that supports blood vessels. And then there's that pseudostratified columnar epithelium that lines the inside of the trachea. To see it more up close, there you can see their nice columnar cells with cilia on their surface, but they have these little basal or stem cells that divide and replace the cells. Therefore, that pseudostratified look. If we see it even closer up, look, those nice columnar cells with their nuclei on the surface, the cilia there, and then the little basal cells down here that would replace these cells when they wear away because they're constantly exposed to the air. So that pseudostratified columnar epithelium here in the lining of the trachea. Um, another view of the same thing, nice columnar cells, the little basal cells down here on the bottom, and the cilia on the surface. This is the... Um, transitional epithelium, uh, cut through the wall of the bladder, a lot of muscle cells down here, a fatty area that supports blood vessels and nerves, and then here's that um, transitional epithelium on the inner surface of the bladder. Uh, you see it up close and it just looks, a whole, looks like a whole bunch of cells jumbled on top of each other. Remember this is a bladder that's um, deflated and the wall is all crumpled up like this and the cells are on, kind of jumbled on top of them each other as the bladder fills with urine in its interior here, those cells are going to stretch out. That's why we call it transitional until you have only a layer of two or three cells, layers thick, but it's still going to maintain that perfect seal so that the urine is held inside the bladder. You can see those little umbrella cells, as they're called on the surface, that maintain that nice seal on the inner surface of the bladder. There's another view of the same transitional epithelium, a little different stain, but you can see the cells all jumbled on top of each other, the interior bladder here 
and another view, again, up close of those cells, transitional epithelial cells all jumbled up on top of each other. And there's the interior of the bladder. All right, that's it for epithelial cells. I just want to take a minute to remind you, use your wish list while you're looking at these slides so that you're sure to be able to match what I would like you to know on the wish list with what you're looking at on the slides, because there's a lot of other things labeled that you don't need to know.